Hello and welcome to tonight's Bible study. We're going through the book of Mark tonight, Mark chapter 2. And uh, it's really a crash course on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so as we begin in Mark chapter 2, uh, Jesus came back into the territory of Capernaum. And I believe it was Capernaum also where there was a wedding. And uh, remember at the wedding, he turned water into wine. But in this uh, particular time, he is at Capernaum. He is teaching in a house and it's very crowded. His, his uh, fame had gained a lot of uh, notoriety as I had talked about yesterday that there were many people following him now and that he was staying mostly out of the cities and in the wilderness and the people were coming to him in the wilderness. But he was in a home and the home was packed out. And there were scribes and Pharisees there. And there was a paralytic uh, that was brought on a stretcher by four of his friends, and they couldn't get in. They wanted to get in, but they couldn't. They wanted to help their friend, and they were desperate to help their friend. And they went above and beyond uh, what normal friends would do because they climbed up on the roof, they ripped open the roof, and then they let their friend down on the stretcher using ropes to... Uh, lower him down. And so they were <laughs> very crafty. And so here comes this paralytic down into the home that is all packed out. And I'm sure that there's uh, dirt and stuff falling on the people inside looking up. And it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's raining uh, branches and whatever they were using for roofing back then. Dirt, mud, uh, it, it was a mess. It's like, anybody got an umbrella here, okay? So, here comes this paralytic down. Jesus looks at him and says, your sins are forgiven you. Now, is that what the paralytic wanted? His sins forgiven. And no, he wasn't thinking about that at all. He wanted his, uh, his legs back. He wanted to be able to walk. And here's Jesus telling him, your sins are forgiven you. And yet, what did he need most? More than anything else, if he never walked again, he needed his sins forgiven so that he would have eternal life in heaven with God. And yet, the real reason for this not only was to forgive this man his sins and to let uh, him know who he was dealing with was the scribes and the Pharisees who said, who is this who is forgiving, saying, I forgive you your sins. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus said to him, to them, what is easier for me to tell you that your sins are forgiven you or for me to tell you get up, take up your mat and walk. But to show you, scribes and Pharisees, that I have the power to forgive sins, get up, take up your mat and walk. And immediately the man got up he took up his mat and he walked. Man, I'm sure he was rejoicing and praising God 
with his sins forgiven. And very often Jesus would say, don't sin anymore. Something worse is going to happen to you. You've been now given a great miracle in honor of that. Live a life that's holy and pleasing to God. Would you please do that? Honor the Lord with your life. We've all had our sins forgiven if we've given our life to the Lord. Are we living like, like it? Or are we living like hell? It's a good question. It's a question that we'll be asked to answer one day. Why did we choose to live the way that we lived when Jesus died on the cross for us, nailed to the cross. It says, follow in his footprints. And I'm sure down at the bottom it says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. Is that the way that we're living? Are we living a life that's crucified with Christ? So, Jesus left out from there in the disciples of John the Baptist were asking, why don't your disciples fast? Jesus said, the bridegroom, me, I'm the Lord, <laughs> is with them. They don't have to fast right now because I'm with them. Fasting is something that is used by us to set our hearts all right, to draw near to God. It doesn't bring God near to us. God couldn't get any nearer to us than he is right now. But we need to adjust our mind and our heart to dive in to all that God has made available for us right here and right now. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Do you have any grasp on that? Do you have any realization of that? Fasting and prayer brings us in to the spiritual. It takes away some of the earthly and brings us deeper into the spiritual. If we allow it, if we do it in the right, with the right motive, with the right heart, if we're not doing it uh, with grievingly, I'm fasting. I haven't had anything to eat in five days. I'm doing this for the Lord. Woe is me. <laughs> you get nothing. But if you're doing it with a heart of joy, a heart that just wants to be close to the Lord, something quiet, something unnoticed. Jesus said, do it uh, not in sackcloth and ashes and grieving, but with washed faces and not letting anyone know. <laughs> Although it seems like every time that I'll be fasting, there'll be some sort of meal that everybody's like, what's up? <laughs> and it's like, well, I'm fasting. <laughs> Okay, uh, so it's, it's not always possible to hide it from your closest, but not everybody needs to know, and I just uh, praise God for the times that I've had in fasting and the results of the fasting. I want my whole heart be close to the Lord, as close as I can possibly.
possibly be. So that's uh, John the Baptist in the fasting. Uh, he's saying, my disciples don't need to. Uh, because they're with me right now. <laughs> uh, and so then, uh, so Jesus said that new wine goes into new wine skins. We don't do things the way we did them in the past because this is something new. Okay? We did things in an old way. In the old way, you can continue to do things in an old way, but a new thing has to be done in a new way. If you put new wine in old wineskins, the old wineskins would rupture. So there was a new way made for the new thing, which is the Holy Spirit coming to and dwell inside of us. This new wine. And we are the new wineskins when we have the Spirit of God dwelling within us. It shouldn't cause our vessels to rupture, okay? So the disciples were, speaking of fasting, <laughs> They were walking on the Sabbath day with the Lord. And they were hungry. And as they walked along the way, they were picking heads of grain, like a wheat stalk. They were picking the, the grain off the, the wheat, wheat stalk and chewing it along the way. And the... Uh, the Pharisees were saying, it's unlawful for you to let your disciples eat and pick those grains on the Sabbath day. Uh, they're working. That's working, you know. Uh, and Jesus said, hadn't you read what it said about David, that David went in to the temple and ate the bread, the show bread, they called it, the bread that was consecrated in the temple, that stayed in the temple, and only the priests could eat it after it was placed out uh, in the temple as a sacrifice. In the, but David went in with his men and ate it, something that was not lawful, and yet uh, it was acceptable. And Jesus said, the Sabbath was not, or man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man. Let me say that again. Man was not made for the Sabbath. But the Sabbath was made for man. The day of rest was made for the man. But Jesus said, the Son of Man, which was him, says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Now the Lord, if he is the Lord, and he is the Lord, he decides what's lawful and what's not lawful on the Sabbath day. And he wrote what was lawful and what was not lawful on the Sabbath day. And they might say that the Lord said, don't gather manna on the Sabbath. They're not gathering manna. And they're having a little snack along the way. They picked something as they're walking. How about if they, why didn't they say, how many steps have you walked? Okay, they're walking on the Sabbath. You can't walk that far on the Sabbath. Jesus was taking them from here to there on the Sabbath. Okay, and... I walked 
12,000 steps tonight. Was that lawful or did I break the Sabbath? I was walking, praising God. Is that lawful on the Sabbath day? It's lawful to praise God and walk with him on the Sabbath day. And it's lawful to, to pick a snack along the way and chew on it as you go. They weren't harvesting the field on the Sabbath day. They were having a snack along the way. Okay? And so, Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. I pray that you've given him a place in your Sabbath day today. And uh, that you've had a great Sabbath day today. I had to stay home from church today. I was supposed to serve today for the first time in months since Darlene was diagnosed with cancer and we found out she didn't have it. And then I was questioning how I could serve and honor my family also. And we, as a family, decided what would be best and how we could do this. And so we're moving forward with serving at Passion again. And as it was, we couldn't go today because my son is staying with us this week and he has COVID-19. So we're all <laughs> locked down. Locked down again. But praise God. Maybe it's just a time to spend more time with my son. You know? And so I'll take every minute. And we're making the most of it. All right. Pray that I can be a blessing to him during this time. I know he feels bad about bringing it into my household. He is a nurse and he got infected by a patient in Washington State. And now here we are. Anyway, keep us in prayer and I will see you tomorrow as we go through the word of God and praise the Lord Jesus. Have a blessed night and a great day tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.